Fellas, this weekend we have an Australian fighter main event in UFC 301, the next pay-per-view. So I think it's time to rank the five best current Aussie slash New Zealand fighters. I've also included New Zealand because I know if I just say Australia, there's going to be that one dude in the comments who complains that there's a few fighters from New Zealand in this list. So we'll count both of those areas. The five best fighters from that specific area currently in the UFC. Again, it's best, not greatest. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this list and who you think the best Aussie fighter is in the UFC. Well, one of the best Aussie fighters, your top five list. Starting off at number five, I'm going with the guy who's main event in this weekend. They call him Bedtime. They call him Astro Boy. They call him Urseg. Steve Urseg, main event in this weekend's pay-per-view. Um, yeah, Steve Urseg's number five already. This guy's kind of speed run a title shot. Dude's had three fights in the UFC, and he's already fighting for a belt. You've got to give him credit for that. His last performance against Matt Schnell was amazing. He was piecing him up until eventually he landed that knockout shot. The two fights before that, he displayed great uh, defensive wrestling. Great strike and he's super technical. His accuracy is amazing. And um, overall, one of the best boxers. And even if he doesn't beat Pantoja, I still think he's going to be top five potential for the flyweight division just because of how skilled this guy is shown. Again, we need to see how he does against Pantoja. And I really do, I, I'm not going to cut him out. He has a really good shot of beating Pantoja. And if Ursa can go out there and beat Pantoja at UFC 301 in the main event, I'm putting him above top five on this list, which is crazy because, like I said, the dude's had three fights in the UFC. He debuted last year, and he's already in the top five best for Aussie fighters. So, Steve Ursig, chucking him number five. We'll see how he does this weekend. But already, the fact that he's got a title shot this soon and he's super skilled, I've got to give him credit. Top five best right now. And coming in at number four is a guy in the same division as Steve Ursig, from the same place as Steve Ursig. And it's Mr. Kai Kara France, one of the cringiest emotes in the UFC, but he's a really skilled fighter. I've got to give Kai Kara, uh, Kai Kara France credit. He's been to the top. Uh, Steve Ursig hasn't actually been to the top yet. He's got more credible wins than Steve Ursig. Um, he did get finished by Brandon Moreno when that was, I think it was an interim title fight against Moreno, where obviously he got finished by body kick. And then he fought Amir Albazi and lost, but let's be honest, it wasn't a loss. It was a robbery. He should have won that fight, and I thought he won that fight comfortably, uh, but Amir Albazi got the decision. And let's be completely honest right now, Kai Kara France is only one good win away from a title shot. We're talking about Urseg getting a title shot. Kara France is kind of floating around. He's had a cursed few past fights, but he's only like one big win away from getting that title shot right back. you got to remember this guy was on a winning streak. Got that knockout on the uh, Adesanya card. Goes out there, obviously, the iconic knockout over Garbrandt. Coming off a win as well. Well, not coming off a win, but had the win over um, Askarov as well. This guy's been around the flyweight division for a while. He has, he has had a bit of a tricky run. He's lost to Moreno twice. He's lost to Roy Val. He's coming off a, a controversial loss to Albazi. So he's only really lost to the top guys of the flyweight division. And he's beaten pretty much everyone else's face. So Cara France... He's, I don't think Ursig's far from overtaking him, but because Cara France right now, in my opinion, has done enough and done more than Ursig has, I've got to give him his credit and I've got to put him at number four. Still a still a great challenger for the flyweight division. Only one win, win away from a title shot. So Kai Cara France, stick him in at number four, but it's a very competitive spot for him and Ursig right now. I think if Ursig gets a win on the weekend, it's going to be hard to say that he's not above Kai Cara France. And then in number three... Is a guy who hasn't fought for a belt yet, but he's going to be fighting for a belt very soon. Mr. Jack Della Maddalena. This guy is, I think he has real good potential of beating pound for pound legend Leon Edwards in the UFC. I don't know why I called him a legend. He's like, what, pound for pound number three. But JDM has a really good shot of winning the welterweight belt. And so far, his UFC career has gone really smooth. I mean, obviously, that really iconic submission uh, and knockout at the same time with Danny Roberts and then Randy Brown at UFC 284. Um, coming off two really impressive wins as well. Beating Kevin Holland, absolutely pieced him up. Well, similar to uh, Steve Ursig, one of the best boxers in the UFC. His combinations are amazing. And coming off that finish over Gilbert Burns, where not only did he display submission defense, not only did he display grappling offense, but the boxing and the knockout threat of JDM is insane. One of the best strikers in the UFC, in my opinion, up there with one of the best boxers in the UFC. And JDM, I've got to put him in number three, that was one of the best Aussie fighters right now. He's only like one one win away from a title shot. The guy called out Shavkat Rachmanov. Who does that? But it's true. The guy's one win away from a title shot. And I think JDM really does pose a big threat to Leon Edwards in the division. I think it's... 
between him and Shafkat, one of those guys has potential to take away that belt from Leon Edwards. And JDM has a really good shot. He's well-rounded. It, like I said, about 50 times already. One of the best boxers in the UFC. Has he gone out there and fought for the belt yet like a guy like Cara France has? He hasn't done that. But at the same time, he's had such a smooth UFC career, undefeated in the UFC. And because he's so skilled, I've got to put him at number three. One of the best fighters in the welterweight division right now. And like I said, with uh, Kai Cara France in uh, her sake, even if he does lose to Leon Edwards, I still think he's top three welterweight material i think he's going to be floating around that top three area for a while and i really do think this guy's champion material so jdm i'm going to put him at number three best right now especially for the fact that he's in a much more competitive division with all due respect than the flower division this guy's in the welterweight division we've got guys like ian gary shavkat leon edwards usman in this division and the fact that he's taking guys out like burns that so effortlessly give him his credit jdm number three in my opinion number two it has to be robert whittaker has to be Robert Whittaker. This guy, is he's, in, he's an insane. He's one of the greatest middleweights of all time, undoubtedly. He's had a, a few tricky fights recently, obviously the, the loss to Adesanya. But even then, that loss to Adesanya that he had not long ago, that could have arguably been a win to Whittaker. That wasn't a, a dominant win to Adesanya. Goes out there, absolutely schools Marvin Vittori in Paris. Then has the finish loss to Drikas Duplessis, which again, no one was expecting that. But Drikas is the current champion, not necessarily something we can diss him too much on and goes out there and has a performance of the lifetime against paulo costa a really good looking paulo costa as well that costa looked great in that fight notable wins as well kelvin gastelum cannonier till your romero on multiple occasions as well robert whittaker has essentially been the best middleweight always been the number one middleweight when adesanya was the champion he was number one and now that drake is his champion is still number one whittaker's the number one middleweight and if he can go out there and beat one of the biggest most hyped prospects in the ufc right now and technically a contender now, Hamzat Shemaev. That is a statement-making win for Robert Whittaker. The fact that Whittaker has been around for so long and taken out so many different middleweights from so many different generations, I have to include Robert Whittaker in this list. He's number two for me. He's one of the greatest middleweights of all time. Top 20, top 25 greatest of all time. Um, yeah, Whittaker. One of the best ever top 25. I got to give him that credit. Robert Whittaker, number two for the best Australian. And number one has to go to Alexander Volkanovsky. In my opinion, he's in the top 10 greatest of all time list. And if he's not in your top 10 greatest of all time list, you're doing it wrong. Arguably the greatest featherweight of all time. This guy's run in the featherweight division was insane. Beating Jose Aldo, beating Max Holloway on three different times. We know how good Max Holloway is, especially after UFC 300. Holloway beat him three times. Uh, Max uh, Volkanovski beat him three times with the most recent win being the most dominant. Beating a uh, Korean zombie as well. Brian Ortega, Yair Rodriguez destroyed him. And the only guys he's lost to in the UFC is Islam Makachev, who first of all is pound for pound number one, the best fighter in the UFC. And he's in a completely different division. And Ili Tapori, who's the undefeated current champion of the division, um, which is, you can't really blame him for that. Volkanovski's legacy is insane, and he is the greatest fighter to come from Australia, the New Zealand, that area. Volkanovski's the greatest arguably the greatest featherweight of all time and for that reason Volkanovski I think he's pretty comfortably has to go number one this guy's got such a great legacy and he's carrying Australian MMA one of the biggest stars and he's not even done yet I reckon this guy's still got a win uh, to go in the UFC you know give this guy like I don't know an Aljamain Sterling easy win for Volkanovski but yeah that is my top five list for the best Australian slash New Zealand fighters currently in the UFC let me know if I missed anyone out and let me know if you change any of the you know the placements on this list but yeah let me know your thoughts and thank you for watching.